Five things people don't know about balance. Hi, I'm Doug. I'm a physical therapist. I've been working with clients for 30 years. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the five things that people commonly don't know about balance. Number five is that we're not born with balance. Balance is not a skill that we simply inherit and automatically know how to balance ourselves. Balance is actually acquired as we develop. When we're young children, we first learn to walk. We pull ourselves up to stand. We learn to stand on two feet. Then we learn to stand without holding on to anything. And eventually we take our first step. We go on playgrounds. We walk on balance beams. We play, we do sports. All of these things help us develop our skill of balance. Balance is not like smell or vision or hearing. Those senses we automatically have. But balance is something that we have to acquire. And if you lose it, it's also something that you have to regain. The number four thing people don't usually know is that it's possible to regain your balance. Once you lose your balance, once you lose your ability to feel balanced or your ability to stay balanced when you're doing different activities, it's definitely possible to relearn it. And this is a really important point because so many people assume that when they lose their balance that it's a one-way street. A lot of us are under the false impression that as you get older, you automatically lose your sense of balance, and that's not true. I've treated clients that are in their 80s that participate in the Ironman triathlon. I've worked with many clients that walk further and run more and swim more than I do, and they're in their 80s and even in their 90s. So it's simply untrue that you lose your sense of balance. Balance is maintained by challenging it. And as long as you keep doing activities that challenge your balance, you'll stay balanced into your 80s and 90s. But if you have an accident like a stroke or some type of brain damage that causes you to lose your ability to be balanced, it is possible to regain it. You basically have to go through the same steps that a child learns balance in the first place. And once you do that, it's possible to regain your sense of balance. The number three biggest misconception is that strength is what gives you your sense of balance. Every single day for the last 30 years of being a physical therapist, Whenever I've talked to someone about why they've lost their balance or how to get it back again, the topic of strength always comes up. I have doctors talking to me about this, other physical therapists. There has been so much research on this topic. And the truth is that strength, while important, is not the key thing in regaining your balance. Most people actually have enough strength to stand up against gravity and to be able to walk. Their problem is not strength, but programming, the ability for their brain to have the right control over their arms and legs so that they stay balanced. So we have programs for how to walk backwards, how to walk sideways, how to stand on one leg, how to balance ourselves as something bumps into us. We learn those programs as children, and then we keep practicing them throughout our lives to make them better and better. So if someone loses their balance, the thing that helps them the most is not strength training, but balance challenging activities. In my clinic, that's all I do to help people regain their balance and regain their ability to walk, and it works. Now, if your strength is so low that you can't stand up against gravity, which sometimes that's the case, then definitely strengthening can help. And certainly, I think strength training is an excellent thing to do. It just doesn't help prevent falls. It doesn't usually help people walk better. I think strength training should be part of everyone's exercise routine, but definitely if you're having trouble with your balance or you're having trouble with your walking, the thing that you should try to focus on is balance challenging activity. The number two biggest misconception about balance is that walkers or canes will make your balance worse. I hear this a lot. Many people who aren't using a walker or a cane tell me, oh, I don't want to get a walker or a cane because I don't want to start falling or I don't want my balance to get worse. I think this is a big misconception. In my opinion, walkers and canes are assistive devices that allow you to maintain your ability to walk. So if you have trouble, if you're, if you're leaning forward a lot or if you're very, very unsteady, you're not going to walk. 
And if you don't walk, every day that goes by that you don't walk, that you don't get activity, your balance is getting worse and worse. So using an assistive device like a walker or a cane that allows you to be more independent and allows you to walk actually makes your balance better. So, so many people are basically avoiding the thing that could make them better for fear that that thing will make them worse. There has never been a study that showed that using a walker or a cane makes your balance worse. Our perception might be that that's the case because we see people struggling to walk who use walkers and canes. People have trouble with their balance before they start using a walker or a cane. We might not see that when we, when we see people out, out and about or in the, in the supermarket struggling to walk who are using a walker or a cane, we might think, wow, that walker is making them worse because I see the walker and they're having trouble. But the truth is all of those people had trouble walking first and then they started using the cane or walker. In the end, if you're using a cane or walker and it allows you to walk more, you're actually making your balance better, you're making your walking ability better. The number one misconception about balance is that balance challenging activities are the worst thing. And this is true not just for the clients that I see, but their families, their doctors. Many, many people in the public believe that if you're having trouble with your walking, that the last thing you want to do is do something that challenges your balance. Now, of course, we don't want anyone to fall. And in my clinic, I use overhead harnesses, I use highly trained therapists, and we do all sorts of things to prevent falls because we know that the clients we see are very at risk for falling. But in order to improve balance, you must do balance challenging activities. And this can vary from person to person. For some people, it might be as simple as just standing without holding on to anything or standing with their feet close together or maybe standing in a heel to toe position without holding a countertop. For other people, it might be standing on one leg or walking backwards on a treadmill or stepping backwards holding something while they're walking up and down a step. The only way for any of us, any human being, whether you're young and fit or old and having a lot of trouble with your walking, the only way to improve it is to challenge your balance. That means that everyone is different. Your level of balance is different than mine and different than anyone else probably watching this video. So you have to find what's challenging to you, but you definitely want to stay safe. My channel is dedicated to presenting activities and exercises that you can do that are safe and that will help you challenge your balance. And I have a lot of videos because people are at all different levels. What works for one person may be just way too difficult for another person. I try to have exercises and activities at every level. I really believe this works. Science and thousands of studies have shown that this is by far the best way to improve balance. Balance challenging activities work, but most people are really just unaware of it. I am dedicated to helping people understand how to maintain their balance and regain their balance. Over the years of being a physical therapist, I found it sad that so many people give up their ability to walk just because someone tells them to avoid things or not try to walk because they're afraid of them falling. I hate that people give up their ability to walk. I think it's one of the worst things that can happen to someone. Usually people that stop walking decline very fast. So I am just dedicated to trying to help everyone in the world learn that they don't have to give up their ability to walk. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this.